Hi, my name is Scott Farhart. I'm an OBGYN uh, here in San Antonio, Texas with Northeast OBGYN Associates. Uh, and I've been in practice since 1989. I found out, I kind of figured out I wanted to be a doctor in high school. Uh, I got admitted to the hospital with an uh, infection in my foot. I was in the hospital for several days on antibiotics. And um, before then, I thought I wanted to be a school teacher because uh, I just loved school and I loved helping the teachers. But then when I was in the hospital and I saw the medical people, I'm like, oh, I think I'd like to be a doctor. So probably from like junior high, junior, when I was a junior in high school. Um, I think what inspired me to come, become a physician was my experience as a patient um, and seeing healthcare providers taking care of people. Um, I knew I was good in math and science, and so I, I felt like I had the, the mind to be a physician. Uh, but I really liked the idea of helping people uh, because I appreciated being helped when I was sick. So when I was a kid, um, probably starting from maybe the second grade on, I was just one of those kids that really loved school. Um, I loved learning, I loved homework, I loved the assignments, I just loved going to school. And I would stay after class and help the teachers grade the papers of my fellow students, which I don't think they really loved. But, um, but I just loved hanging out with the teachers. And I just thought, I'm going to grow up and become a school teacher because I really appreciated, um, I guess, the mentorship of the teachers and what they were putting into my life. Um, and learning really came easily for me, and I just loved the challenges. And um, the teachers all were very inspiring. Uh, I mean, I really can't think of a bad teacher that I had. I just really appreciated. Um, what they were pouring into my life. Um, and I would tell anybody from the time I was in second grade on, I'm going to be a teacher. And then in the summer, um, between my I think junior and senior year of high school, um, I ended up getting a mosquito bite. And near it, I got like another bite or something, and I picked at it and it got infected. And um, we didn't go to the doctor very often. We didn't have a ton of money growing up. And so it wasn't until like it started to swell and half my leg was red and I was having a fever that my parents were like, what's going on with you? I'm like, oh, I've had this bite. And then they took me to the family doc and then they admitted me to the hospital. And I was on um, IV antibiotics. And they put me in, because I was still a teenager, I was kind of in the pediatric wing, even though you hate being in a pediatric wing when you're a teenager. So they stuck me kind of towards the end of the hall away from all the little kids. And in the room next door to me was another teenager, and it was a girl. And she was in for some other medical problem, I don't even remember what it was. But um, we really were the only teens on the whole floor. And so I would wheelchair, because I couldn't walk on my leg, I'd wheelchair over to her room and we would just start hanging out together. And she was going to become a nurse. And so we became very good friends. She was going to nursing school, um, and I just thought this whole medical thing, I mean, they miraculously healed my leg, um, and I just thought this whole thing is really cool. And you have to have good grades to go to medical school, and I had good grades, and I'm like, maybe I'll do that. Um, there weren't any doctors in my family, but my dad had said one time when I was younger that um, he had wanted to go to medical school, but then when he got my mom pregnant, that his plans kind of got derailed. And I think maybe that planted some seeds that I could fulfill a dream of his that he didn't get to do. Um, and I didn't really do it for him, but I think it did plant a little bit of a seed. Um, but that girl that I met at the hospital, we became very, very close friends. Um, and she became a nurse practitioner and I became a doctor. So I have no doubt that I was placed in the room next to her also for her to kind of be an inspiration for me uh, to change career paths. I mean, I have no doubt I would, be a, I would have been a great teacher, um, but um, there are things that I would have missed out on. Um, and I would have still been up in upstate New York, and I would have missed being here in Texas, which is an awesome place to be. I went to medical school in 1981, uh, graduated in 1985, and then did my residency from 1985 to 1989. Uh, and then I've been in San Antonio practicing OBGYN since 1989. When I be began working, I had thought I was going to be an anesthesiologist uh, because I had friends who were anesthesiologists. Uh, but then when I uh, started working in obstetrics, I really found out that I loved that field um, and uh, decided to go into that instead. Um, I really do like helping people. Um, I like uh, getting involved in people's lives. So I wanted a profession where I would get to know people for a long period of time, uh, be part of their uh, family story, um, which really I like about kind of that old 
family doctor feel from a long time ago when the, you know, the town doctor knew everybody and was part of everybody's lives. I really like that idea. Um, and so that's, for me, a really fun thing to do. From a mentorship standpoint, um, pr and probably in different parts of my life, when I was in uh, college, I had briefly thought about uh, becoming a pastor instead of becoming a doctor. And I had a biology professor who saw that I had dropped out of my biology major and asked what I was doing. And I said, well, I feel like I want to serve God. Um, and he says, well, you don't have to be a pastor to serve God. You can serve God in any profession you want. God needs people serving him in every profession. Um, and it's interesting, just that one little statement put me right back on track as to, to what I was originally going to do. So I would say he probably had a very big influence on me because otherwise I would be a pastor instead of a doctor. I think what I enjoy most about my work is the variety. Um, there are no two days that are the same. Um, every patient's different, every birth is different, every surgery is different, um, every day is a mixture of different things. So what I really like about OBGYN is the mixture of procedures and medicine and primary care and uh, health and wellness and um, it's just it's different every day which is fun for me. I think what motivates me is um, really just wanting to be used by God uh, on that particular day so every day um, I just sort of wake up and go okay help me say the things you want me to say help me do the things you want me to do um, help me be an instrument maybe to bring encouragement or maybe to diagnose or discover something that would help somebody else um, maybe to help somebody through a tough time um, or just uh, encourage them to do something that maybe they wouldn't have done before. I'd like the world to know about me. Um, basically, I'm, I'm a guy who really loves what he does. Um, I love uh, the practice of medicine. I love my profession. Uh, I know sometimes people get discouraged by all the changes in healthcare and Obamacare and the insurance companies and the bureaucracy and the government and the red tape and all that stuff. Um, but I really love uh, what I do. I love the uh, privilege of being able to be inserted into people's lives, um, sometimes for decades, uh, and it's been a real privilege. Uh, secrets to my success, I think, first and foremost is God, uh, because I do feel like He directs me. Um, I try to listen to His voice, um, to hear Him say, don't forget this, look at this, you may have messed this up check this out. So I definitely feel like it's a partnership. Um, I don't think I'm smarter than the average person or uh, more gifted as a physician than the average person, uh, but I think in partnership, um, sometimes God will tell me something and reveal something that maybe something that somebody else might have missed. Uh, so hopefully in a partnership with Him, I'm better than the average that you would get. I think for words of wisdom for the next generation is to not look at where you come from um, as a limitation to where you can go. Uh, my parents uh, ended up getting married when they were in their teens because my dad got my mom pregnant. Um, and back then, um, you didn't do abortion, you got married. Um, and so as soon as she got pregnant, they got married. Um, it didn't last very long, uh, but there are you know, pictures of me as a toddler um, in a trailer park. Um, and my parents got divorced and I was raised by a single mom in a trailer park. Um, and so if I let that hold me back and say, oh, well, this is where I'm from, this is the best it can get, um, you know, I think it would have limited me. So I think just to not limit yourself based on where you come from, um, similarly, not just professionally, but even in relationships. My mom's been married three times, my dad's been married twice, but I've been married to the same person for 34 years. So just because... Um, I didn't have good role models in my family doesn't mean I can't find good role models outside of my family to pattern my life with. And I think I've looked around and chosen people to fill in the gaps that maybe didn't come with my family or didn't come from my background, but that God placed in my path uh, to be mentors for me. Um, and then hopefully my wife and I are mentors to people below us. So when I'm not working, um, I really like to be outdoors. I like to uh, garden. I don't really like necessarily mowing a yard or clipping a hedge, but I like creating. Um, I like the, uh, I guess some of the artistic properties of uh, flowers and plants and, and just being outdoors. It's nice when you've been inside in the office all day long to have some time to be outdoors. Um, but I also like 
planting something and watching it grow. Um, and I like creating beauty in my surroundings so that when people come to the house and they sit outside, they look around and um, they just feel like they're kind of in a, a hideaway and in a garden. I like when I know my wife is gonna be out on the patio for her to be able to look around and see things that are beautiful. Uh, so that's kind of an inspiration for me, but also a passion um, is just, it's kind of in a creative realm. I don't, I don't paint or I don't draw, but my canvas is living things. I think for me, when I measure success, um, it kind of goes back to, uh, you know, what my pastor talks about is there's really not a success without a successor. And so I feel like if my um, children carry on the values of my wife and I to the next generation, then we've been successful. Um, again, as I mentioned in an earlier question, um, you know, I've been married 34 years. Um, my parents have been married and divorced many times. And so for us, staying in our marriage till the end is a success. Um, if I inspire my kids to do that with their marriage and with my grandkids, that's a success. So hopefully from my wife and I down, um, we have a lineage of people that are living successful lives and we will feel like we've been a success. As far as failing before success, um, I think there, there are moments of failures in everything that you do. I've definitely had times where I have failed as a physician. Um, I've had times where I've failed as a husband, failed as a father, um, but there are moments in a very long tapestry of life. Um, and so I feel like, in general, I've gone on a fairly straight path, um, kind of progressing straight from high school, college, medical school, residency, profession. I've not really had a lot of detours. I had about eight weeks where I thought I wanted to do something else, and God intervened with a mentor to put me back on my path. So. Um, I've been pretty consistent in a, what I would consider a fairly straight line. As far as how I hear God's voice, um, some is through the scriptures, um, and then some is honestly just, I, don't, I guess if you've listened long enough, you can hear something, um, whether you decide that's your idea or God's, but sometimes things will just come to me that I know I didn't think of. Um, and if you listen to it and you don't dismiss it, um, or you don't get distracted, or you don't decide, oh, I don't have time to do that, then sometimes you discover something that unfolds that you would have missed otherwise. So there are definitely times I miss his voice, and I end up going into a dead end, or something happens and I miss the chance to avoid that, um, and then I can look backwards and go, oh, I heard you say that, and I just didn't want to be bothered by it at the time. I thought I could just bypass that and go around it. So if you do that enough times and you realize, you know, it's faster and easier to just do it the way God told you to do it, even if it seems like that might be a detour, in the long run, it actually saved you a traffic jam. Your detour that you don't understand, why am I getting off on this road, actually is a faster way back onto the original road than if you just plowed through bumper to bumper traffic. So um, I think the longer that I've walked with God, hopefully the faster I'm listening to His voice. I became a Christian in high school. I had, um, I was always singing in school and I had friends um, who were part of a singing group um, out of their church and they um, had heard me sing at a play and they invited me to audition for their singing group. Um, and so I joined the singing group that was touring around the different cities in upstate New York. Um, and I always had thought that I was, you know, a good person and we went to church and. Um, as far as I knew, I was following God's path. Um, and then in the spring of that same year that I joined this group, they went on a retreat. Um, and they gave us kind of a questionnaire of self-reflection. Um, and it was through that that I really realized that I um, didn't really have a personal relationship with Jesus. And I didn't really know I needed to until somebody told me I did. I just thought going to church and talking to God was fine. Um, I didn't even really understand about a personal relationship until somebody shared that with me. Um, and it wasn't until after the retreat that someone actually explained to me that I had gotten saved <laughs> because I didn't even really realize. I just prayed and said, oh, I'll have a relationship with this person of the Trinity. I thought I was already doing that with this person of the Trinity. And it kind of like, I didn't really know what to do with Jesus. So I just kept praying to God. And they're like, he is the way to God. Um, and so it's like, okay, I'll go this way. 
um, and then really from senior year of high school on started uh, being mentored by people who um, you know helped me with my growth through college and then when I came to medical school here I joined Cornerstone Church and Pastor Hagee has been my mentor ever since. You know future generations it, it's hard because I think every generation looks at the generations after them and thinks that they're idiots um, and that they're doing it all wrong uh, because they're not doing it the way we did. Uh, I'm, I know my grandparents generation thought we were just crazy people in the 60s and 70s um, and now I look at the Millennials and the poor Millennials are getting you know dumped on. Uh, so I, I want them to be successful uh, but I think the main thing too is that they realize the things that are important and that they I think through every generation, especially if you stick to a biblical foundation, it doesn't really matter what the trends of your generation are. You won't miss those core principles and, and the foundations of faith and the foundations of marriage and family and raising kids. And the style may change and the technology may change, but if you stay to the bedrock foundation, your styles won't lead you astray and your technology won't lead you astray. They'll just complement your way of walking through the same path. I guess the best day of my life is uh, when I asked Jesus to be my personal Lord and Savior. Uh, the second best day of my life would be when I asked my wife to marry me. She's been awesome. Um, third and fourth are the birth of my kids. So. I think one of the things that is really fun about my profession is, in general, it's a happy profession. Um, a lot of medicine deals with disease, um, with loss, uh, with trauma. And uh, OBGYN, for the most part, deals with happiness. There is some sadness with miscarriage. There is occasional sadness when someone loses a baby. Um, there are some times where people will get a gynecologic cancer, but so much of my day is really spent on the happy, um, on the things people have looked forward to, um, on the, the moments of their life that they look back on as some of the best days of their lives. And the fact that I get to be a part of that um, is really very special. And not very many professions do you get to be a part of somebody's best day. Um, and I think for the most part, compared to maybe other medical professions, um, I really get to do a lot of happy um, and be a part of a lot of happy and a lot of good news. Um, and it's probably one of the few parts of medicine that actually deals with something that is fun and exciting and planned and looked forward to. Um, and a lot of times I get to tell people really good news.